Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So today I am kicking off my 2022 declutter series. I've done a declutter series once before and it was actually in 2020. It's been almost two years now, um, at least like a year and a half. And honestly, this is way overdue. I should have I should have decluttered my collection a while ago, but I didn't, so here we are. And now we're doing a massive declutter. I'm really excited to just go through my collection of makeup, which is a lot of makeup, and get rid of some stuff, see exactly what I have. Um, you know, just try to like bring stuff forward that I don't even use that much because I'm so overwhelmed with how much makeup I have, which, it happens because of what I do for YouTube. Like, it's very easy to like drown in the makeup that I have, which is pretty much what's happening. So I decided it was time for another declutter and I figured it would be fun to take you guys along with me. So that is what we're doing today. I'm gonna have four different episodes. Uh, the last time I did it, I also included fashion and skincare, but this time I'm just going to do just makeup and I'm gonna do four episodes. I'm actually breaking down the face makeup into two different episodes because I have more face makeup than anything. I'm doing two different face episodes. The first episode like of the entire Declutter series will cover foundation, concealer, and powder. And then the second episode will include primer, blush, bronzer, highlighter. And then the two other episodes after that will be eyeshadow and like eye makeup and stuff like that. And then the fourth episode will be like lip makeup. So I'm really, really excited to just clean out everything and clear it out. It's very, very time for all of this. And this way I can kind of get a handle on what exactly I have, reorganize everything I have. I actually have all my makeup over here in a dresser, which I'm gonna show you guys here in a second. Um, but this is gonna be the first episode, so we're going to cover foundation, concealer, and powder today and go through everything that I have in those categories. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so this is the dresser that I keep all of my makeup in. I know it seems a little bit excessive, but I do try so much makeup, so I needed something besides like Alex drawers to put my makeup in. Something prettier, I guess. So I got this at TJ Maxx and it's perfect. So this drawer over here has my foundation and powder in it. This has primer, highlighter, blush, bronzer, and concealer. And so we're going to be getting into these two drawers today uh, because that's where all my face makeup is housed. time viewer of mine or you've watched even just a few videos you probably have heard me mention uh, the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear. I have quite a lot of these as you can see. The most used shade that I have is 420 which are these three right here. This is the one that I'm currently using. It's open and then these two are backups. I also have some summer shades but this one is actually pretty much empty so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my empties bin for the next empties video. This is shade 470. It's actually a little bit too dark even for my like self-tanned skin. I actually am better matched with 460 when I'm self-tanned. So I'm not gonna repurchase this shade most likely unless I were like super tan for some reason. But instead I'll probably repurchase this. But I still have to work through this one. So I'm gonna keep this one and I'm not really decluttering this one. Um, I'm just going ahead and putting it in the empties because there's like nothing left in here. I don't even know why. I have it in my drawer in the first place, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the empties bin. And also this shade 410 is just too like light for me. It's just like when I put it on my face, I look too corpse-like and it also doesn't have a lid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in like my declutter only because I think somebody else, like one of my friends who are a little bit fairer than I am, will match better with this. So I'm gonna get rid of those two. The darker one in the empties bin, and then this one I'll give away to somebody who it matches better. But these four right here, I'm definitely gonna keep three of the shade 420, which is my typical shade, and then one in my self-tan shade. Keeping all of these, not a surprise, because uh, I absolutely adore that foundation. So then we have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I actually did a full face of Charlotte Tilbury makeup. And in that video, I included a bunch of dupes for everything. This one I compared to this. I thought it was a close dupe to this, but this I like better. And this one actually breaks me out and it smells like dirt. <laughs> 
and kind of like trees. So as much as I love the packaging and I had high hopes for this, I'm going to declutter it because I don't like it and it breaks me out. So there's no use in keeping it. So hopefully somebody else that I know or somebody else that I can maybe send this to with Project Beauty Share or something like that will enjoy it more than I do. It's a very expensive foundation, beautiful bottle, but just was not impressed at all. So then I have two Catrice True Skin Foundations. These are two different shades. One is Neutral Porcelain. This is like my winter shade and the other one is Neutral Sand, which is more of my like self-tanned shade. I love this foundation. I did a video last year with the first impressions of this foundation and ended up really enjoying it. I don't love it as much as Freshwear because Freshwear is just on a whole different level for me when it comes to foundations, but this one is really good. And it's a pretty decent price. It's like $11. I think it's so pretty. And I love the packaging of this as well. Like the rose gold top with like just the pretty glass bottle. So I'm definitely going to be keeping both of these. So then I have the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. And I just can't get down with this foundation. It is way too matte. It like makes me look so dry no matter how much hydration or moisturizing kind of products I put underneath this so i'm gonna pass it on because i do not like it it's really expensive i think it's like 49 dollars, and it's just not a star product for me so definitely gonna declutter it maybe somebody else with like oilier skin could like it so then i have this rare beauty foundation i actually bought this in the summer so it's a lot darker than i am right now as you can see um this is just i liked it but i'm not in love with it it's just not quite right and this is in the shade 210 n by the way and I really like the concealer from this line. This one is just not it for me. I just, I just don't think that I use it enough and I've had it for almost two years now. So it's definitely time to retire it. I think I will even just throw this away instead of giving it away because it is older. So yeah, it's just not perfect. It's almost like it just kind of breaks apart sort of easily. Like when I first tried it, I really liked it. But the more I wore it, I just, it wasn't like, the fresh wear. The fresh wear is just on a different tier than everything. I know that it's getting annoying and I sound like a broken record because I talk about the fresh wear all the time, but I do compare every foundation to it because it's my favorite. I feel like a lot of people would do that. They would compare foundations that they try with their favorite foundation that they own. And this one just didn't hold a candle to that one. I thought it was good, but I definitely would not repurchase it. And I'm just going to go ahead and like throw it away. So next I have the Maybelline Super Stay Foundation. I have it in the active wear version, which is this one with the black line. And then I have it in the standard one. I like these fine. I do think they're, it, they just kind of crack when I sweat. Like they kind of like crease in all of my areas that I don't like to accentuate. So I'm gonna declutter them. I think they're fine. Um, I think that this would actually be more suited to people with more normal skin rather than like oily skin or combination skin because I don't have super oily skin in the summer or anything like that, but I still found these breaking apart and just like looking like weird. And with drier skin in the winter, um, I find that they just settle into like dry patches that I didn't even think I had. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of both of these and maybe see if somebody else can use them. So then I have the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I tried this in my Foundation 5 series. It ended up being my favorite. So I'm definitely gonna keep this. Um, this is definitely a star product in the Charlotte Tilbury line. I think that overall Charlotte Tilbury is kind of overrated, which we'll get to as we get further into this declutter series because a lot of the products that I got from Charlotte Tilbury's line are definitely being decluttered, just gonna be honest. But this is wonderful. I love this. I would definitely repurchase it. I love the packaging. I love that it's got a squeezy tube as well as a pump and it's just really pretty. So it's kind of like a mousse liquid feeling. Uh, when you put it on your skin, but it just melts right into your skin and it's pretty long lasting. And I think it just really makes my skin look plump and youthful. And I really, really love it. This was also another foundation I tried in my Foundation 5 series. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Advanced Skin Care Foundation or whatever the long name is. I really, really love this. It's also very comparable to this. My only complaint with this is that this kind of breaks apart on my chin. I'm gonna keep it because I do like it and I can you know, look past the chin breaking apart issue. Um, but uh, this is a re really beautiful foundation and most people don't have problems with it breaking apart on their chin. I think that my chin can just tend to be a little bit of a problem area for me, but I absolutely, absolutely love this. So I have two of these She Glam Long Lasting Breathable Matte Foundations. Um, one is brand new, hasn't even been opened and this one is open. So I'm gonna keep this one and give this away to somebody else since it hasn't been used. Um, but I do really like this foundation. I do mostly use it like as a mixer to make maybe a dewy foundation a little bit more matte or satin 
or to get a little bit more coverage out of my base that day. Um, I like it alone, but I think it really shines as a mixing foundation. So I'm gonna keep this one and get rid of this one. So this is the Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation. Guys, I didn't even ever open this. And it sucks because I should have, but look, first of all, that is the most yellowy shade. Um, so I'm actually gonna keep this in the box. I never tried it. It's just, I just, the shade was so weird for me when I looked in the bottle that I didn't even like try it. This came out like almost two years ago. So I'm gonna give it away and see if maybe somebody else can get some use out of it. I just think that, I don't know. I'm just, I like that it has mineral sunscreen in it, but I just think that the shades are so weird that none of them would work for me. And this one is so yellow. So I'm actually gonna move this one down like here cause it's more of a serum foundation and I need to finish like the more matte ones. <laughs> So this is the Clinique Stay Matte Oil-Free Makeup. I really like this. This is a summer shade, um, but I think it's very comparable to the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, like the original foundation from the Infallible Pro Matte line. I'm gonna get rid of this one, but I do think they're dupes for each other, except I do think that one's a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the declutter because I just don't use it enough. I don't think I used it at all last summer. And so it's it's just time. It's time to go. So then we have two of the e.l.f. Camo CC creams. These break me out. They've got SPF in them, but their SPF is partially chemical. So I can't use it because it breaks me out. I thought these were okay. Um, I actually tried them twice. And the second time, I definitely liked it more than the first. And I like that it has collagen, peptides, and niacinamide in it as well as sunscreen, of course, but it's just not a holy grail product for me. It didn't like meet my expectations and it also broke me out. So I'm getting rid of these. Maybe somebody else can use them and love them. I've got this Shape Tape Cloud Coverage by Tarte. I actually use this in my latest coffee chat video. And um, I really like this stuff. I like that it has like a little squeezy tube. It's got just a little bit of SPF in there, not much, but 15 is better than none, I guess. And it's mineral, so I really like this and I'm gonna continue to use it, so I'm definitely keeping it. Then I've got this It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation Full Coverage Moisturizer. Um, it's oil-free and it also has a physical slash mineral SPF in there. I thought it was fine. It's not my favorite or anything, so I'm gonna give it away because I just don't reach for it, but I do think it's fine. So um, I'm gonna let somebody else love this. So this is my beloved pretty natural hydrating foundation from essence it's like six dollars it's got like low medium to medium coverage i really really like this stuff um i have it in the shade neutral vanilla by the way which is a really good shade match for me and you wouldn't think so based on that but it really is a good shade match so i love this i will be repurchasing it it's so inexpensive and i also will be keeping it because it's amazing i love it so i've got a lot of purito bb creams here we have the old packaging, and so I'm definitely gonna get rid of both of these. This was their old packaging of their like BB cream. So it's called two different things, but they're the same product. But these are kind of old, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. Um, so yeah, but I do like it, and we're gonna get to these. So it looks like I have these in three different shades, but I have them in two different shades. These are supposed to be the same shade, but those two colors are not the same. So I'm gonna keep all of these because this one is almost used up and this one is supposedly the same shade. And I also, I'm gonna keep this one. This is a lighter shade in the shade 21. Uh, these are in the shade 23, by the way. But I mixed 21 and 23 to get a perfect shade match for my winter skin. So I'm gonna keep all of these because this one's almost done and this one is like my backup for this shade. So yeah, but I do really like this. A very nice BB cream. A lot of people really like it. It's really great for like, low coverage days, or you could even build it up to like a higher coverage if you wanted to. So I really like it. It's got SPF in there and it's just got a nice finish as well as no like essential oils and it's also fragrance free. So it's pretty much like all that you could possibly want. <laughs> so I've got these two. These I actually featured in last year's Foundation 5 series and I liked these pretty well. Um, I think they won third place if I'm remembering right. But I am gonna get rid of them because I don't use them very much. I actually prefer another product that is similar to these. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of both of these, although I do think that these are the prettiest, like it's got like little water droplets because it's like skin water infused tinted moisturizer, but I just don't reach for these enough. So I'm hoping maybe somebody else can get uh, some uses out of these. I do have these in two different shades, fair and then light. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the declutter pile. But this one is the one that I think is comparable to this one. And I just like this one so much better. It's like $4.99. And the reason I like it so much is 
it just makes my skin look so youthful and pretty. I love taking this on vacation because it's so easy. I just put it on with my fingers and I'm good to go. And it's so tiny, but like it has almost an entire ounce, but it's like very compact so you can fit it in like a little travel bag if you want to. I just think this is a wonderful product and it beats out any other kind of products like this except for this one because these two are a little bit different and this one has a little bit more of a satin finish and this one is definitely more of a dewy finish but i love this and will definitely keep this and will definitely repurchase it so i've got some perlice bb creams we've got the perfect glow and the ageless glow i'm decluttering both of these i never use these i used these once and wasn't impressed and never reached for them again. So there's no reason for me to hold on to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. So then we have this beautiful, beautiful bottle. <laughs> this is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. I used this a couple of times. I guess I was expecting more from it. Like I know it's a serum foundation, but based on the claims, I was expecting it to be like groundbreaking and it's really not. So I'm gonna declutter this and let somebody else maybe love it who has a little bit different taste than I do or isn't expecting so much from a product like I do because I try so many products, I tend to have really high expectations. So this is like a little squeezy uh, watery foundation from Millie Maj. Um, I got this from YesStyle and it's okay. Um, not my favorite or anything like that. I have other products that I am actually keeping that I like better than this that are kind of comparable to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this and maybe somebody else can love it. Um, and it's kind of expensive if I remember right. I think it was like $26 and all the products that compared to this in my collection that I'm keeping are much less expensive. So kind of the same thing with this. This is actually the lightest shade in this uh, velvet liquid foundation. So I think that's a little comical because how on earth is this the lightest when it's basically in the medium shade range. So I'm gonna get rid of it. I look like an Oompa Loompa when I wear this, even when I'm self tanned. I actually tried this when I was self tanned last summer and it was still too like orange and weird. So I'm gonna get rid of it because it's just, it's not it for me. So then we have the Pacifica Kind Tint Tinted Serum. This I also tried in my most recent Foundation 5 series. This got third place. I really like it. Um, it does pill if you apply it with your fingers and even sometimes when you have like something under it like moisturizer. So I think the best way to apply this is with a brush. And I also think if they were to like improve the formula, adding an SPF would be great because then you wouldn't have to worry about putting an SPF under it or at least not as much of an SPF under it, if you know what I mean? Like maybe not as much of your regular SPF because that way what you were lacking in your typical SPF, you can make up with something like this that has SPF in it. So the number one thing I'd like to change about this is adding SPF, but overall, I really do like this. It's very, very sheer, but I like the way it makes, makes my skin look. It just does something to my skin. I don't even know how to really explain it, but if you wanna see it in action, go check out that video and you will see the roller coaster ride of what testing this product was like because at first I was very unsure about it and then I ended up really enjoying it. So yes, but I'm definitely keeping this. So then I have uh, the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Serum. I've got it in two different shades, very light and then light. I actually um, mix these to get my perfect shade. These are kind of expensive. On the low end, they're like $15 and on the high end, they're close to 20, if not right at 20. So they are a bit expensive, but I do really like them. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep them. And this one is perfect for when I'm self tanned and the mix of these two or even this one alone is perfect for like my winter skin tone. So then what I think is kind of a dupe for this is this Clinique one. And because of that, um, I always am like looking for dupes to make videos on. I'm gonna keep this and keep comparing these two products and then I'll keep you posted. I do really like this one, but I actually think I even like this one a little bit better but I do think they're very close in formula. So stay tuned for dupes videos because I do try out a lot of products and in that way I'm able to find dupes quite often. So uh, yes, but I'm gonna keep this. So then I've got the Bite Changemaker uh, Micellar Foundation. This was a huge launch a couple of years ago. I used it and liked it, but the more that I used it, the more I realized that it's almost kind of difficult to apply because it like sets in and then it kind of like pills up or something or like sits on top of your skin it's very weird so i like it but i'm not in love with it so i'm gonna declutter it and maybe somebody else can enjoy it so i'm gonna get rid of this because it's expired and so i'm gonna throw it away i've had it for almost three years now so it's it's time <laughs> So 
So these up here are my powder foundations and then I've got face powders and then it kind of flows into like powders that have SPF in them. So I'm gonna start off with the powder foundation since that's what we were on, we were on foundations and then we're gonna go into powders. So uh, first I have this e.l.f. Uh, powder foundation. I really like this. I have it in my correct shade, at least the closest shade to my actual skin tone. And then the shade I tried out in my most recent Foundation 5 series. These are supposed to be a shade apart. I beg to differ. This is 205N and this is 210N and I think they are way off. I'm going to keep both of these because this is like my winter shade. And then this one will be closer to my like self tan summer shade. So I'm gonna keep both of these. And by the way, this is definitely turned into a favorite powder foundation too. And then this is my other favorite powder foundation. This is the JCAT Aqua Assurance powder foundation. I have hit pan on my like winter shade. And then I also have my more of a summer shade. And then I have a backup of my winter shade because I go, I say winter shade, but it's just my fair tone shade. You know, um, I'm more, I'm more often fair than I am self tan. So I get, the, I got a backup of um, my lighter shade and then I also have my summer shade. I'm keeping all of these because I love them so much I don't love a whole lot of powder foundations. Those are the only two that I have tried and I've tried a lot that I actually love So then let's get into some loose powders real quick um, This is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder and this is the L'Oreal Infallible Loose Setting Powder I love both of these a lot. These are my two favorites. This one is cheaper and it comes with a little bit more product and then this one is more expensive and comes with less product, but I actually run through them at about the same rate. I don't know how that's possible, but I do, and I love these, so I'm keeping both of them. Then I have um, the H Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation and then the L'Oreal Infallible Powder Foundation. These two I've tried on their own as powder foundations, as I did with the J-Cat one and the e.l.f. one, and I don't love them like that. I actually like these as finishing powders, so that's how I use them. This one is actually broken. Um, as you can see, it's kind of popped up the pan. So I'm gonna throw this one away and then get another one in this shade that's like complete again. <laughs> but I do love that one. And then this one is pretty new and I've really been enjoying it as my, like kind of to set my face. And so I'm definitely keeping this. So then we have, let's go through these at the same time and there's a reason. So first we have this Charlotte Tilbury powder Everybody really seems to love this powder. I actually got it in a mini size because like Charlotte Tilbury is so expensive. <laughs> but I um, wasn't the hugest fan of this, but for my dupes video that I did, I uh, had two dupes for them. And that was the Flower Light Illusion Perfecting Powder, as well as the number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Powder. These um, are the exact same. All of these are the exact same as each other. They're not my favorite or anything like that. So I am going to get rid of all of them. But in case you're wondering, this one has two different dupes from the drugstore. First is the number seven one, and then the other one is the Flower Beauty one. The Flower Beauty one you can also get from Amazon, which is what I did. But I'm gonna get rid of all of these because I just don't love them. I feel like I almost like more coverage out of my powder than these can provide. And I didn't love them under the under eye as well. I just didn't think it set my concealer very well. Oh, I almost forgot about this loose powder. This is the um, original Ma Mineral Veil Loose Finishing Powder from Bare Minerals. I actually got this like as a birthday gift from Ulta, so I'm gonna keep it because I actually haven't tried it yet, but um, I've never tried this and I'm very interested to see like what the fuss was all about for a while. So then I have this CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Pressed Powder. Um, didn't love this one, going to get rid of it, only used it a couple times and just wasn't super impressed. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and declutter this because I just, I just don't need all this powder. So then I have this Physician's Formula Powder. Uh, this is the Creamy Natural Mineral Face Powder. I actually really love this. It's one of my favorite powders to set my makeup with. It provides um, kind of the same amount of coverage that a powder foundation does. So I am going to keep this. It is a bit of a mess, but I am going to keep this and continue using this because I love it. And then I have this loose powder, but it's kind of dewy. I, I just got this. I actually should have included this in the portion where I talked about loose powders, but I just picked this up. It's not a new product or anything, but I did just pick it up. And so I'm interested in it because I think it's supposed to create more of a glow, not like sparkly or anything, but less of a matte finish. So I'm interested to see if that's what it does. Um, so I am going to keep this because I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> and then I've got a couple of SPF powders here. First is the Can Make one. And this one um, is definitely reserved for when I'm a little bit tanner because of that shade. But I use both of these to 
kind of reapply SPF throughout the day. This has an SPF of 50, like plus, 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 plus. And then this one is, as you can see, a little bit lighter. It's in, it's actually in the translucent shade. And this one is a Japanese chemical sunscreen. And this one is a mineral sunscreen. So um, I love both of these. So I'm going to keep both of them. Now I've got my concealers and I'm excited to really comb through these because I definitely think I could get rid of a decent amount of these hopefully. <laughs> First, I got the Tarte Ultra Creamy Concealer. Um, I'm not a big fan of Tarte Shape Tape like the concealers. Out of the two, this is my favorite. I think they're really good concealers, but for my personal taste, they're a little bit too full coverage. I prefer medium coverage. This e.l.f. Hydrating Chemo Concealer is definitely a dupe for the Ultra Creamy, and what's funny is the e.l.f. one came out like a year before this one did. So I'm going to declutter both of these though because they are the same kind of formula where they're very full coverage. I prefer more medium coverage to be honest. So I'm going to declutter both of these. So then I've got the Benefit Boing Concealer. This is like the original Boing Concealer. I know they have a new one. I actually need to put this in my empties because it's pretty much there and it's kind of old now. I really liked it but I don't really think that I would repurchase it because I like so many other concealers from the drugstore that are much less expensive. So I'm gonna declutter this and put this in my empties bin for the next empties video. But I did think it was a really good concealer. So I've got two of the Catrice True Skin High Coverage Concealers. These I really, really like. This one is way too light for me. This is Neutral Swan and I felt like this made my under eyes way too bright. So I picked it up in Cool Cashmere and this is a much better shade match for me. So I'm gonna keep this one and give this one away and see if somebody else with lighter skin will enjoy it more than I do. It's just way too brightening. This is like my favorite concealer right now, by the way. I absolutely love it. Then I've got the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer. Same kind of thing where um, this is just a little bit too bright for me. And this one is a little bit more of a better match um, when it comes to like what I'm looking for. I like, I like my concealer to match my foundation more than like the trend where it's, you know, your under eyes are super bright. So I'm gonna get rid of this shade. By the way, this is in the shade Fair Beige. And then this other one is in Light Beige. I'm gonna keep Light Beige and get rid of Fair Beige. I really do like this concealer. It's not my all time favorite. I like the Catrice one a little bit more, but I do really like it and it's really inexpensive. So I've got the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. They have changed the formula on this. It's not the same anymore. I'm going to use these up, but I probably won't repurchase them because I did repurchase it um, and it's just not the same anymore. These are, it, it sucks because this was such a good concealer. Why did they have to, like, why do companies have to change formulas of already Holy Girl pro products? I don't understand, but I will keep these, but I won't repurchase them. I'm just going to use them up. Then I've got this Haley's Beauty Rewind Concealer. This is, says it's full coverage, but it's, it's almost of a high medium coverage, which I really like. I love this packaging. This right here is super cooling. So like in the mornings when I'm getting ready early, this is perfect because it just kind of like wakes up my under eye area and it also provides nice coverage to where it looks like I got more sleep than I did. So I love this, will be repurchasing it. This is in the shade, by the way, um, Fair Light Neutral and it's perfect for me. The shade is perfect. I love this formula. It's definitely getting up there with my Catrice in that it's one of my favorites. And I've got the very, very beloved Instant Age Rewind um, Color Corrector Concealer. So um, I really like this. Um, I'm definitely going to keep it. I Every time I repurchase it, I wonder why I stopped using it because it's such a good cold classic item. So I am going to keep this. I love it. The shade is so nice and neutral. So it's a great concealer. So then I've got this Rare Beauty Concealer. I definitely like this more than I liked the foundation. I think it's an underrated concealer. I can't really use this in the winter time as much, so I'm gonna probably use it up this summer. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna repurchase it. We will see when this is in my empties. Um, we'll see where I go from there, but I do think this is a beautiful formula. It's just that I think a lot of drugstore formulas are really, really great as well. So then I've got this Lancome Tint Edol Ultra Wear Concealer. Um, this was very underwhelming to me. I really want to declutter it, but I'm not going to do it yet because I want to include it in a speed reviews video. So I'm going to hold on to it for that. But after that, I'm pretty much going to declutter it. So yeah, it's just not exactly what I was expecting. It's extremely hard to get this thing out of the container because the doe foot is too big for the like opening. 
and I just thought it was kind of cakey-ish. So sad, especially because it's so freaking expensive. Then I've got this Shiseido Sinker Skin Concealer. I picked this up because I've heard Jessica Braun talk about it so much. First of all, the doe foot is so unique. Do you see that? Maybe I can get a little bit closer. It's so, it's like a, almost like a slight hourglass. Um, this is the tiniest thing of concealer I've ever seen in my life. I thought it was gonna be bigger than this. I like it so far. I don't know if I love it as much as Jessica does, but I'm still giving it a try. So definitely have your notification bell on because I will be including this in the speed reviews video I keep talking about. This is the new Kat Von D Good Apple Concealer. The reason why it's still in the box is because I think the shade is wrong and I'm going to return it. I felt like the formula was, gosh, I can't get this out. I felt like the formula was okay, but the shade is just all weird and wonky. Like it's almost like way too bright as well as being a little bit too like almost yellowy when you put it on your skin. So I'm gonna return it. So I'm basically decluttering it because I I don't love the formula enough to repurchase it, I don't think. So I think I'm just gonna take it back, but I'm gonna technically declutter it. Um, it's just gonna go back to the store so I can get money back. So then I've got this e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer. This is such a unique concealer. It's got like this little brush. I actually really enjoy this for like lighter coverage days. I don't know if I would repurchase it because I actually have other products that I like over this for the same kind of reason for more natural days. But I'm gonna finish this up because it's almost done. It's really easy to fly through. Um, but I do think it's really cool that it has like this clicky thing on the back. So, um, and that's how you get the product out. So I do like it, but I actually think that I like a couple of other products better and we're gonna get to that. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna use it up, but uh, I don't know if I would repurchase it. So then I've got this Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. I like this okay. Um, it's not as good in my opinion as the e.l.f. one. Let me kind of show you. I love this, like this little bubble thing is so cool because it kind of helps contain the product. But it's, it's weird because this product, in my opinion, is almost kind of thick, but it doesn't provide a lot of coverage. So I'm gonna declutter this. Hopefully somebody else will like it. I also think that the shade is kind of yellowy. That's on me for sure. But um, I just, I don't love it. And I don't, I think it's too thick for providing so little coverage. And I know it's meant to provide little coverage, but I was kind of hoping it would be so thick. If you can, you can kind of see it from here. So then I've got this Revlon Photo Ready Stick Concealer, and this one I actually used in a video last year. I really like this stuff. I think that this is such an underrated product. Like, yes, it's a stick concealer, but it blends in so nicely. It's so creamy, very underrated. So I'm definitely keeping this. It's super easy on the go too, because you know, you're not getting like liquid concealer everywhere. So then I've got these two Revolution Conceal and Fix concealers. These are like spot concealers. This I actually bought to try to use as an eye base when one of my favorite eye bases by Revolution was being discontinued, but I actually realized that these have salicylic acid in them. So um, I can't use them on my eyes. I feel like that would cause irritation, but also I use them to spot conceal. I just wasn't in love. So I'm gonna declutter both of these. So now we've come to like some color correctors. So first I've got this Catrice Ultimate Camouflage Cream. This is the like toughest cream to get out of the container and it just does not blend. Uh, really sad because I was, I had such high hopes for this because I like Catrice and I love like these kind of correctors, but I'm definitely decluttering this because it's just a no-go for me. And then we've got the Pixie by Petra one. And this one I actually uh, compared as a dupe to the Charlotte Tilbury one. You can see these shades are a little bit different. When you blend them out, they have the exact same look. You can't even tell. Uh, this one is a better shade match to the medium shade in Charlotte Tilbury's line. They have the exact same effect and the exact same feel, so I really do like it. I'm gonna keep this and use it up, but I have to be honest, in the Charlotte Tilbury video, most of the time I liked the dupes better or I just thought they were the exact same. This one, because of like the shade and everything and you can't get a lighter shade in the Pixie one, I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury one over the Pixie. This actually was my favorite product from that video, which I did not think was gonna happen. I use it all the time. I love it. It's the perfect consistency and texture. So I would definitely repurchase this, I have to be honest, and I'll definitely be keeping it. And another under eye corrector, which I also just love the packaging on, is this Tarte one. I have this in the shade Light Medium, and I believe this one is in Fair. So you can see that the Charlotte Tilbury one and the Tarte one are very similar in color. And honestly, they're very similar in formula as well. So I really like this Tarte one as well. 
it's just, it does a great job of just like canceling out like discoloration. You can even see how it kind of canceled out my veining. So I love this. Um, I will definitely keep this one as well. I'm really into under eye correctors. I have to be honest, they're so quick and easy. And sometimes when I just want to wear like a tinted sunscreen, but I also want to have some sort of coverage on my eyes without it being like full on concealer coverage, under eye correctors have been the way to go for me. And so lastly, I have this like weird, it's an under eye primer. So I didn't know where to put it like with my primers or like my concealers, but I put it with my concealers because I use this before I put concealer on. I actually really like this. I feel like it kind of plumps up my under eye and wakes it up to kind of make me feel more awake. So I actually really like this. I think it's kind of an underrated product from Ulta Beauty. I think a lot of Ulta Beauty's line is underrated, <laughs> to be honest. But um, I am gonna keep this. I think it's really good. So these are all of the foundations, powders, and concealers that I'm keeping, and these are all of the ones I'm getting rid of. I feel like I did a pretty good job getting rid of some, and I have definitely cleared out some space in my drawer for these. So I'm very excited that I did that. So I'm gonna go ahead and organize these and uh, end off this video. So they all fit in four of these now, whereas it took like two of these to fit all my foundation. Some of them just fell out into the drawer. It was a mess. So it's so nice to see everything a little bit more organized now and I'll definitely be able to find all my stuff. All right, so that is it for the foundation, concealer, and powder declutter video. I feel like I did a pretty good job getting rid of stuff. Um, I've already started quite a hefty pile of things to give away or send to like Project Beauty Share. I'm excited for some people to maybe fall in love with some of these products that I couldn't use or just didn't love. So yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and close this declutter episode off now, but make sure you have your notification bells on so you know when the next three episodes go up. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and also subscribe to my channel if you're not already. For now, that is it and I will see you guys in the next video of this series. Mm -hmm.